next person we meet, we just have to speak, and just bless them, love them, be kind. So many people now don't want to even make eye contact. They're just scurrying around. You know, even in, in, in Australia, they say, you go to the supermarkets, if you see, if you see your neighbour, this is what the government said, if you see your neighbour, don't make eye contact, don't stop, don't talk to them, just walk on by. The conditioning the people to completely be fragmented. This is not the church. The church can't do that. The church cannot follow this narrative. It's anti-human, anti-Christian, it's anti what Jesus would do. You know, what did Jesus do? He touched the lepers. And people say, well, he was Jesus, wasn't he? And he said, follow me. He said, follow me. Jesus wasn't afraid. I'm sure after he touched the lepers, he didn't quickly go and wash his hands in a panic. <laughs> Oh, he probably put his arm around He put his arm around John or Peter just afterwards. You know? Jesus says, follow me. We've got to come up out of the culture of this world. The culture of this world has invaded the church. And we're listening to godless people telling us how to do church. I find that really, really offensive. I know that God is offended. I spoke to him about it. He's deeply, deeply offended. He's deeply offended that politicians are controlling the church. This is completely evil, it's completely dark, and it's destroying the church. But there is a remnant rising. There is a remnant and it's going to happen in houses across the nation. Across the nation. And he's going to fill he's going to fill those houses with disciples sold out Sold out for Jesus Christ. Who wants to be sold out for Jesus Christ? I want to be. I want to be sold out and say, Lord, I want to be sold out. I want to give everything. I want to give 200%. And then I'm not happy. I want to give more. I want to give more. I want to give my life. This is what he's calling us. He says, lay down your life. Let's lay down our lives for Jesus Christ. And he's going to do wonderful things in this day. He's going to break the power of sin. Many, many Christians have struggled with sin issues. It's just simple. Lay down your life. Follow Jesus. Surrender all. And it's broken. People that struggle with all kinds of sin, it can be broken in a moment. People can be delivered. All we need to do is surrender. Mm. You can switch off that TV, unsubscribe from Netflix, and just focus on the kingdom of God. Focus on the kingdom. We've got to, because that television now is the enemy in every believer's heart. Mm -hmm. I said it in my book, it will be used to its most horrifying degree in the future, giving rise to a global government. Mm -hmm. The fulfilment of prophecy in this. Mm -hmm. I also said that the pharmaceutical industry, along with the mainstream media, in one little sentence, would deceive the inhabitants of the It's all in the Bible. It's all there, it's all in the book of Revelation. We only have to look. We've got to follow God. We cannot follow government when it is acting in an unrighteous way towards the church. Yes, we follow government when they are acting in righteous mm -hmm. ways. Our laws are, are good for us. But when they are opposed to the kingdom of God, when they are stopping the church, go to church but you can't worship. I couldn't believe that one. But you must be joking. Nothing is ever going to stop me worshiping. Go to church, but you can't worship. This is disgusting. It's really disgusting. And the church has to really wake up. And what we're going to end up with is the churches that capitulate, the churches that give in to government, will be the state church. Just like in China. Because China is the blueprint for the world. That's what the globalists want. They want that whole system to come. And this is what the whole vaccine passport is all about. It's the, it's the credit score system that they use in China. Everything will be attached to it, connected to it, everything. Banking, everything. It's all, these are not just my thoughts. This is all written down. It's all documented. This is where they want it to go. And we as believers, who Jesus says are free indeed, need to remain free. They know oh, we will not bow to the system. We cannot bow to the system of this world. That's what God told me in 2009, after I'd had this dramatic encounter with the Lord. It was a week later, God said, you bowed to government. I said, what? You bowed to government? How? He said, you did it without knowing it. 
he just trusted him. That was enough. And I fell on my knees and I said, never again. 2009, I turned my back, literally. As I was bowing, I saw evil governments before me and I turned around. I said, never again. And when this thing hit, I said, never, never. I will never bow to this. It's evil, it's satanic, it's dark, and the church should have nothing to do with it. Mm -hmm. And this is a wonderful time, because it's time just to come out, to rise up, and to see the Lord mm -hmm. come in power. But we have to trust in him. We have to give him our life. And we can't say, oh, I'm giving my life, but then we still live in the system of this world, trust in the system of this world. He wants us to give up everything. And we will see wonderful miracles wrought in his name. It's not going to be easy. I wrote in one of my other books about revival and persecution. They go hand in hand. So many people that wanted revival, wanted revival because it was all going to be wonderful. It's going to be like a little utopia <laughs> on the earth. And all the governments are going to... The governments are never going to get saved. That idea is not biblical. Not a biblical idea that revival is going to impact government. Yes, it may impact individuals in government, but government will never be saved. Time for us to realise that if we actually want revival, we've got to sacrifice everything. We've got to give up everything and see the kingdom of God come and see the lost come in. Thousands upon thousands are going to hell. And we as the church can't afford to just sing on Sunday. Mm -hmm. I'm like, Lord, I don't want to just do that. I need to go out as well. Yes, worship the Lord. But we've got to go out. We've got to rescue the people because time is running out. And if you say, well, I don't believe time is running out. We're not getting any younger, are we? Our time is running out, isn't it? So we know that for ourselves, time is running out. Let's get out there. Let's preach this glorious gospel. And let's see the kingdom established in people's lives people broken free from fear, from the darkness of this age, from the deception of this world, and let's see a glorious, a glorious kingdom of God here. But Jesus said to pray that his kingdom on this earth is possible to see that. And we're seeing it. We're going to start seeing it all over the land, all over the homes, all in homes all over the United Kingdom and beyond. We're going to see it in Italy. It's going to happen in America. We're already seeing it. We, I mean, I'm in contact with secret churches in the UK. They've gone underground. The pastors have moved from their buildings and they've gone underground into secret locations because they could not bow to the system. It's all about following Jesus. It's all about following Jesus. Should we follow him? Should we say tonight, yeah, I'm going to give my life to Jesus Christ? You know, if we don't mean it, let's not do it. Because we'll only offend the Lord. If we mean it, if in our hearts we say, yeah, Lord, I want to follow I say this every day. I say, Lord, I want to follow you. I want to follow you. This is what we teach our people in this year about following Jesus. Right. On Facebook now you can report an extremist friend. I'm an extremist. I'm an extremist because I follow Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was an extremist doesn't get more extreme than dying for the world. doesn't get more extreme than that. Jesus Christ was an extreme. You can see where all this is heading. It's all about vilifying the people that are not following the narrative of this world. That's why Jesus said we will be hated at the end. We can always see it happen. We can see it growing. But we don't have to be afraid. We don't have to be discouraged because we need to get into the secret place. In there, everything's good. All good. It doesn't matter what happens to us. What harm may come to us. Stephen had the most incredible experience when he was martyred. Mm. So heaven opened. We saw Jesus standing right hand of the Father. And it says, it describes his death as not some terrible death, but that he fell asleep. I believe it's because he saw him laying there in peace. Because he had an encounter with the living God. You shouldn't be afraid of death. Paul said, where are death is your sin? Where is it? It's gone. It's taking it away. It's the doorway, isn't it? Into this life with God. He wants to give it to us now. He wants to give us the peace now. 
He wants to commission tonight. He really wants to touch her. So anyone who wants to say, yeah, I'm going to do this. I'm going to follow Jesus. Shall we stand to our feet?